When we use, estimate a regression using ordinary least squares from a sample of our population, we're trying to get good estimates of the intercept and in, often in particular the slope. So if we think of the yi as our variable, outcome variable, and we're saying it depends on a linear function of the x variable, plus perhaps some other factors that we don't account for that go into the error term, we're trying to get a good estimate of this slope parameter. And one way in which it should be good is that it's unbiased. And by unbiased, I like to think of that as meaning that the estimate is on average on target. So our estimate is what we call beta 1 hat. And unbiased technically means this. And that is to say that the expected value of beta 1 hat, the estimate you get from your regression, say out of the computer, is equal to beta 1 the underlying population effect that's out there. Now the thing is you're taking random samples of the whole population and every time you take a random sample you get a slightly different group of people or observations and therefore estimates of beta 1 are going to vary from one sample to the other. Sometimes it'll be higher than the population value beta 1, sometimes it'll be lower, but what we're saying is that over many many random samples on average you're going to be right on target that's unbiased and that would be that's really desirable property if it's biased then you could be systematically off in one way or another and you're going to get uh, draw poor conclusions from such a regression now I want to go through at least a sketch of the proof that the ordinary least squares slope in a simple regression is unbiased under our least squares assumptions and probably the key assumption is going to be this one here and that is that the conditional expectation of the error term is zero. And what that really assures is that there's no systematic correlation between the error term, the left out factors that we don't control for in the regression, and the variable of interest, x1, that we're using as a regressor. The proof is a little complicated, but here's the basic idea. There's not, uh, the, the idea is not that difficult to understand. First of all, what we're going to do is show that the expected value of beta 1 hat across many different samples is equal to beta 1, that's what we're trying to estimate, plus something. There's going to be another term, this something. You'll see what it is. Then the second step is to show that that something is equal to zero under our least squares assumptions. So we show that the expected value of our estimate is beta 1 plus something, and then that something tends to go to zero on average under our assumptions. Now what are the key assumptions? Again, I mentioned one of those is the error term has conditional mean zero, and the other one that comes in is that the values of the uh, variables involved, x and y, for the members of the sample are all identically and independently distributed draws from the underlying population. So we're just that's basically a, a pure random sampling assumption. So we need to start with what is the formula for that ordinary least squares estimate of the slope, and we've seen that that is this expression. So beta 1 hat, that estimate, is essentially the ratio of the covariance of x and y to the variance of x. And what we're going to do in this little proof is we're going to focus on the numerator part first, because that's really where the action is. So that sum of across all the observations in the sample from i equals 1 to n, I'm going to tend to suppress that here, but you can remember that this is summing across all the observations in the sample of xi minus its mean times yi minus its mean. We're going to take a look at what that is. Okay, so let's do a few th preliminary things first so we can kind of uh, make some progress with the main part of the little proof. First of all, remember that our model that we're trying to estimate is this. Yi for each individual in the population uh, is determined by beta 0, the intercept, plus beta 1, the population slope parameter, times the person's xi plus this error term, right? There's other th factors that go into determining y other than x, and those are the things that go into the error term. Now, that implies that y bar, remember, looking back at what we're trying to do here, we're going to look at this. So, y bar is the sample mean of y, 
and to get a sample mean we take 1 over n uh, times the sum across all the individuals in the sample of that entity, right? So we're just adding them up and dividing by n. So that's what gets us to there. That's just the definition of the sample mean y bar using our formula for the model that we're estimating. Um, then we can do a little bit more. We can distribute the sum since these are just things that are added up, we can put that in front of each of the other components and add those up separately. So that's what we're doing in this step. And then the next step to get to this point, uh, this has involved a couple of things that we've looked at in previous slides. In particular, those two things are equal to each other. So the sum of the x's is equal to n times x bar. That just follows from the definition of the sample mean x bar. The sum of the beta zeros, beta zero is just a constant, right? It's just the intercept term. So when we add up n of those, we're going to get n times beta zero. And this here again applies the idea that the mean of a variable, u bar, the sample mean of the error terms, uh, is equal to the sum over n. and So that's what gives us that equality as well. Okay, And so once you take that into account, we've got 1 over n times a whole bunch of things that are multiplied by n, so the n's there cancel each other out and we're left with this expression. That's for y bar. So now y minus y bar, substituting in, we've got y i is that, given our model, y bar is this, we just showed that, and you can see the beta zeros cancel out and you're left with this. So this is just a useful expression for yi minus y bar that we're going to make use of. Okay, so let's return to what we're trying to figure out. Remember this. This is what we're looking at. This is the numerator of the formula for the least squares estimate of the slope, beta 1 hat. All right, so now I take the y minus y bar and I substitute it in that little expression that I just derived in the previous slide. All right? And now I'm going to pick this apart a little bit. I'm going to take this part, and that's what this is right here. You'll notice I have x minus x bar and x minus x bar times each other gives us x minus x bar squared. The beta 1 can be brought outside the sum because it's a constant term. And this is the other part the x minus x bar times u minus u bar. Okay, so moving forward, we're just going to bring this down. That's from the previous line. We're going to divide this thing into two parts, the ui part and the u bar part. So that's the first part, sum of x minus x bar times ui minus sum of x minus x bar times u bar. So this is all just a bunch of algebra. Now, it turns out at this point, you can bring the u bar out in front of that sum, and this part right here is just equal to zero. You can show that without too much difficulty. The sum of the, the deviation of x from its mean always adds up to zero in any sample. So this whole last term here just goes to zero, and we're left with this. So this has just been a little bit of algebraic manipulation. The numerator of our slope formula can be re-expressed as beta 1 times the sum of x minus x bar squared plus this little function of the error term here. Now again, that was the numerator, so now we're going to put the denominator back into the bottom of it and find out what our formula for beta 1 hat implies. So here's the standard formula implied by ordinary least squares. I've substituted in to the numerator of that, the thing that I just derived. And now you'll notice, this is quite convenient, this chunk cancels with that on the beta 1 term. So this beta 1 is all that's left there. And then I have this part over this part. And that's the second term. Well, there you have it, because now we've shown step 1 that the formula for the ordinary least squares regression coefficient beta 1 hat can be expressed as beta 1 plus something else. So we've got beta 1 plus something. We're going to look at that something. So I'm going to rewrite it just a little bit. That's what I ended up with right there in the previous slide. 
I'm going to take this second term and bring the denominator in underneath the sum. We can do that. So we end up with this formula right here. This is still equal to beta 1 hat. Now to look at the question of whether it's unbiased or not, we need to take the expectation of beta 1 hat because that's what we're doing. We're saying across a whole bunch of different random samples, if we kept doing the, the regression over and over again, the expectation is the long run average over an infinite number of random samples. So that's the expectation of beta 1 hat. And that's going to be equal to the expectation of this side, which is expected value of beta 1, plus the expected value of that second term, the something part. Now the expected value of beta 1 is just beta 1, because the beta 1 is a fixed parameter that we assume is out there in the population. That's what we're trying to estimate. So the expectation of that is always just beta 1. And then here's the thing that we need to figure out whether that's equal to zero or not. Because if it is, then we're home free. We've shown that expected beta 1 hat is in fact equal to beta 1. So is that second messy term there actually zero? Well, there's two ways to approach this at this point. Um, this is where we ended up right here. The proof can be completed in a, what I'll call a naive way. The naive proof is simply to assume that the x's in the sample are all fixed, that they're not random variables. And under what circumstances though, would that be true? I'd prefer not to call this a randomized experiment, but let's suppose we just assigned the x's in an experiment. So they were actually fixed by me rather than by a random process in the real world. So in my sample, I've just uh, set the x's. You could imagine that kind of experiment. Uh, people sometimes think of like agricultural experiments where you apply, say, a certain fertilizer in different amounts to different little plots. And every plot, you determine what the x's are. So they are truly then fixed by the experimenter. Now, when the x's are fixed, it means that they're not random in any way. They're totally constants. And that allows us to bring the expectation inside the sum and in front of the ui there, because it's as if these are just constants. And when you do that, then we have expected u over here. But we one of our least squares assumptions was that the expected value of the ui is uh, 0. That was the zero mean assumption. And then you're done, because then we've shown that that whole second term is zero. This is zero. If this is zero, then zero times anything is zero, and you add up a bunch of zeros, and you get zero. And so, case closed. But of course, that was kind of cheating, because the x's in the real world are not fixed. We have observational data, and so the x's are uh, drawn from a random sample. So the x's are actually random variables. They are not generally fixed, except in the rare kind of artificial case of where the experimenter fixes them. So we are going to use a different strategy <coughs> to prove it when the x's are random, and that is to employ something called the law of iterated expectations. And I don't want to get too far into the technicalities of this, but here's the idea. So here's that second term that we want to find the expectation of, right? The law of iter iterated expectations essentially says you can decompose a complex expected value into a part where you have the expectation over x and then the expectation uh, of over u conditional on the x's. And what does this mean? It means essentially we're going to treat the x's as if they were fixed and that's because we're going to look at the expectation of the error term conditional on the x's. So once the x's, you've conditioned on the x's, it says you've got a particular sample that you've drawn, and once that sample is known, it's as if the x's are fixed for this one sample, and then we can take the expectation of u given those fixed x's conditionally. Now, they're not actually fixed, they're random, so that's why this is out here you'd still want to take the expected value across all the possible random samples from which you could draw the x's. Um, and so that's still necessary, but you'll notice by doing it this way, 
the part that's inside the sum here, the expected value of u conditional on the all the x's in the sample, turns out to be zero under our least squares assumptions. And the least squares assumptions that you apply here are actually both the one that the sample is iid and that the conditional mean is zero. So once you get to this point, you've proven once again that that second term is zero, even under a more general set of assumptions using this law of iterated expectations, and that leaves us with the punchline, which is that the expected value of beta 1 hat is indeed equal to beta 1. It was equal to beta 1 plus something, and that something was 0. And therefore, under the set of assumptions we have, the coefficient on the slope, the slope coefficient on x1 is an unbiased estimate of the population slope. Again, the crucial assumptions there are all those assumptions we make about the, the least squares, and in particular that the error term is uncorrelated with the x.